I made the 3D coloring book for people like you and me. For people who are struggling to become the artist they know they can be. For people with full-time jobs and for beginners who are too afraid or intimidated to even start. The 3D coloring book is for people who are looking to change their lives for the better and pursue a hobby or career in the game art world that they thought wasn't possible. With hundreds of free professional level assets to practice on and new texturing tutorials being added every week, the coloring book has become a great tool to help beginners and hobbyists gain the confidence that they need to tackle their own projects and to give people like you and me the skills that we need to take our texturing to the next level. And this week in the 3D Coloring Book Workshop, I'm going to share with you how to easily approach texturing your armored characters in Substance Painter with only a few simple layers. Now, this is only a small section of the tutorial, and the full tutorial is available in the 3D Coloring Book Workshop and on Patreon, so you can pick whatever platform you're more comfortable with. The next stage of your life starts today. Let's get started. And just like that, the cloth and decals are done. So we are on to our final texture and it's been so quick so far. Uh, it is the metal. Now I wanna make this um, stylized metal as well. So we're gonna be going through all of the steps that you need to know to make a stylized metal texture. So right here I'm messing around and experimenting with colors and I I recommend that you also pause the video right here and start messing around with the colors as well with a fill layer just to see the color palette that you like. Um, I end up with a very light blue just to contrast the red as well. Um, something like that. And a lot of this video is going to be me messing around with the textures. Right here I'm experimenting with a plastic look. If you put the roughness around 0.3 um, or 0.4 you get this really cool stylized uh, plasticky look. Pressing C on your keyboard and hopping into the base color channel is going to show you a better idea of how this color is going to look. So first what I'm doing is adding a gradient just like last time. Uh, add a fill layer, add a black mask and the position generator and I'm going to again make sure to draw the user's eye by creating um, a darker point at the bottom and bringing it up as it goes to the top a little lighter. And next, just like every other layer, we need some depth to it. So let's go ahead and add some ambient occlusion. Uh, let's add a fill layer, right click black mask, add a generator and then go ahead and add the ambient occlusion and don't make and make sure to invert that as well so you start highlighting just like this only the edges of where the polygons connect um, choose a darker color um, and i experiment with the red see if i want to make the rust because it is metal but overall this is up to you and i would recommend using the base color channel to start experimenting with it to see the color that you like Next, let's add some grunge to it just to mess with the roughness a little bit and to break it up. So go ahead and add a dirt layer, um, fill layer, black mask, dirt generator, choose a nice dark color um, and use the base color channel like I'm doing by pressing C to take a look at how it's going to actually look without the lighting or the reflectivity or the mellowness affecting it. So once I choose a nice depth that I'm happy with, go ahead and select a color that you're happy with. Um, and something like that looks really great. Um, you could even stop here, honestly, but there are a few more layers that I want to do. But I just want to show you guys that this is the power of PBR and how easy it is to make some amazing assets. With This was like, what, four or five layers. It's great. So next, with stylized art, it's always important to make sure that the edges are highlighted so that they pop. With metal, you can go ahead and use the metal edge wear generator. So add a black mask. Um, and then use metal edge generator. Um, 
you can use the fill tool to select the base color and then just desaturate it slightly so that the edges pop out and you've got a nice accurate color as well. Um, since those edges are worn because of wear and tear and people have rubbed it or whatever of, of use, you can always go ahead and drop the metal or drop the roughness as well to break up that roughness even further. And for people wondering, roughness, stylized roughness, on the low end is always around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and on the high end is always 0 0.8 to around 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So stick around there and you're going to have a nice stylized roughness level. Now we're almost done, so let's add one more layer with a black mask, and we're going to add again the metal edgeware generator. This time we're going to mess with those curvature settings just to get a small fine detail right on the tip of the edge of that bevel. Just like that, by pulling back the wear level. And then there we've got great edges that are they're popping perfectly. That looks fantastic already. So you can remove the colors, everything else, um, and mess with the color if you want. But for even something like that, in my opinion, that looks great. And you've got some nice color variation um, with multiple layers of edgeware. And that's how you do it easily. Even adding a single extra layer of edgeware like this makes such a huge difference when it comes to metal. It almost looks hand painted when you go to the color base channel. And that's exactly what we're going for. Okay, and just like every other texture to wrap this up, create a fill layer and let's add some baked lighting to it. So make sure to turn the blending mode to soft light and then right click, add a filter and add the baked stylized lighting filter. And you can see it adds some great color variation coming down from the top where light would be shining off of it. So no matter where you place your asset in what environment you're always gonna have, it's always gonna be very well lit and have great color variation. You don't have to rely purely on the lighting of the scene. Now it's baked into the asset itself. And that is a wrap. Go ahead and go through all of the layers and tweak them, mess with the roughness, do whatever you wanna do, create different color palettes because now you can because you've created a fully PBR and properly masked out asset. Um, you should be very proud of yourself for how far you've made it. Um, and I am very proud of you. So that's it. That is how you create a stylized PBR character in Substance Painter. I hope you take a lot of what you've learned and are able to apply it in all of your future projects. I wish you the best and I will see you guys in the next 3D coloring book workshop tutorial. Take care guys.